They are the undefeated champs looking to defend their crown here in 2019. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down Clemson with Pigskin and Pete. How you doing this afternoon, man? Hey, listen, I'm amazing and fantastic, but you already know that. I, you know, I kind of guessed that. I kind of guessed that, but uh, it's just a courtesy to ask. But uh, you are flying high, and why not with this football team and the program running on all cylinders as it is? Uh, I opened up. Uh, my laptop today looked uh, just to make sure I didn't miss any Clemson football news. Did a Google search and see that uh, you're entertaining another five star on campus. So that's just the way things are rolling right now at 15 and 0, defending national champs. And and you just don't win the national championship game. You uh, completely embarrass the team that everybody thought was the best. Uh, that 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 feel has to you got to maybe. Pinch yourself every once in a while just to think, hey, I, kn I know we we won a national title a couple of years ago, so I know we're capable. But to do what we did, I, I still kind of uh, am, am not uh, not understanding how we pulled that off. Yeah, so I've been pinching myself since about 2012. So that, that'll that never stop happening as long as Clemson's, you know, doing what they're doing. I don't, you know, a, a lot of fans start to take stuff for granted. I don't because I know that this could end at any day. I mean, yeah, I mean, nothing is... is given every single year nothing's in stone as far as how long will we have sweeney i tend to think we'll have sweeney for a very long time but you just never know so that you know two years from now i could be sitting around and uh moaning about a, another six and six season like we used to have so but uh yeah the, the recruiting has been going well uh 2019 i call clemson four-star university because we seem to pick up every four-star in the country but we hit on all the five stars we get now the 2020 class is coming in it's projected to be probably the best uh, recruiting class that Clemson has had under Sweeney and maybe ever. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Who knows what you can get accomplished if you get a little talent in there, you know? Yeah. yeah we're lacking talent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got Pigskin Pete on the line to talk some Clemson football. The boys are in camp. Not a whole lot of news. Uh, everything chugging along as expected. Uh, let's look at the offense. Uh, it's pretty well in line in set. I know you lose one of your leaders up front in Mitch Hyatt, uh, one of the very best at what he did. And we'll talk about him in just a few minutes regarding the NFL draft. But otherwise, uh, and then there's that guy that would uh, catch a few clutch passes here and there, I think, uh, Mr. Hunter Renfro. But besides that, uh, talent all over the place and experience big game talent. Yeah, so this offense is going to be absolutely loaded. I actually did a video the other day. Well, I project that Clemson has the potential to be the best offense in the country this year. And um, that, that's not just me being a Clemson homer. That's just if you look at the personnel across the board. I mean, the, the, the wide receiver's position is it's got to be the deepest in the country. And that even eclipses teams like Oklahoma and Ohio State, which always have deep wide receiving cores, in my opinion. Um, the, uh, the offensive line is something that a lot of non-Clemson fans have been pointing out while you're losing – you know, Mitch Hyatt. Well, we got Jackson Carmen. I, I know you know who he is. He's an Ohio boy. Oh, yeah. He's a lot of Ohio. He'll be taking Mitch Hyatt's place. And the rest of the offensive line, this might be the most veteran offensive line we've had in a while. I think there's four seniors and then Jackson Carmen. So I'm not too worried about the offensive line. Uh, obviously, our running back core the past couple of years has been, you know, as deep as we've ever seen it before. A lot of people like to point out, you know, back when Spiller and, uh, Davis were the two running backs of Clemson. That might have been the best Clemson running back duo, which I agree. But we have three and four elite running backs at this point. So we, we don't have to run Travis Etienne, uh, you know, to death. And he's got fresh legs late in the year. So from the wide receiver position to the quarterback position, obviously, to the running back position, we are just absolutely loaded. And I'm not really too worried about the offensive line. And that running back depth is something that we've only really seen. And I know somebody might write in and find a team in 2011 or some aberration of an example out there somewhere that we've only seen out of Alabama. So you mentioned the other elite teams like in Ohio State, like in Oklahoma and some of the other teams that have been at that level, Georgia, in the last couple of years. Yeah, they've had the two guys and Georgia's right there as well. They, they do have three and four at this point. But to have that wave of running backs where the fourth guy is going to get drafted. Uh, is, is pretty remarkable and keeps the guys fresh and throws a lot of different uh, 
concerns at the defense in regards to skill set. You got this guy who's the bulldozer. You got this guy that can go out in the flat, catch a ball, or go downfield is almost like a slot receiver. You got this guy that's the burner, or they're really all burners, but they all have different skill sets. And uh, yeah, it looks like you've gotten to that point where you just have that stable of running backs, and everybody's fresh, and everybody's ready to go. Yeah, that really helps, especially in, a, in an offense like Clemson's where they, you know, you, you can't be you can't be one dimensional. You can't be pass heavy uh, and you can't be run heavy. Well, you can be run heavy depending on who you're playing. If you're just trying to control the clock and, you know, you know, beat them into submission. But uh, yet to have su- to have these two capable running backs behind ETN, because ETN is still going to be the featured back. But to listen, last year, ETN, if you look at his numbers, I think he had like sixteen hundred yards, 20 something touchdowns. But he averaged over eight yards a carry. Uh, well, not just last year. Even his freshman year, he averaged over that. And so he's only taking like 12 or 13 carries a game. When you look at like other schools like Jonathan Taylor and even Bryce Love, these guys are carrying the ball 25 times a game. And he's putting up stats that are similar to theirs as far as yardage. Now, I know they got more yards, but he's just killing everybody in, in uh, yards per carry category. Yeah, I've seen some numbers thrown around in regards to his uh, numbers and yards per carry being historic. Uh, Some of the best numbers in college football, as you mentioned, uh, the two years running now at right around eight plus yards per carry. I think that, yeah, I mean, I know it's hard to, it's really your nitpicking at this point because he can make every throw on the field. He's a lot more mobile than people give him credit for as well. And he's quick. And I think he's tough. Even that the game where he got knocked in the head and got knocked out of the game by Syracuse, he was begging to come back in the mm-hmm. game. So the guy's, a, the guy's a gamer. You know, arm talent is out of this world. So if I had to nitpick, I would say that going into his second season, he will be a lot better at the line of scrimmage as far as reading defenses and, and possibly changing plays. And I'm, again, you know, it, it, that's the sort of thing that you get better with, with, with time and experience. And not that he was bad at it last year. But I think that there's a big difference between a true freshman who's trying to sort of learn the ropes and a guy that's accomplished what he's accomplished in his first year and coming back after another full off season now of, of you know, watching film and and, uh, and learning this sort of thing. I think next year he'll be just a, a more heady player instead of just relying on his talent alone. 